up? It's your girl now. Welcome to or welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm on visual diary number four. This video will be visual diary vlog number four. And I just got out the bath and I just washed my hair. Um, blow dried my hair out. I kind of like clipped my ends a little bit. Not a whole lot. Should have did a little bit more. But I clipped my ends and blew my hair out because I'm thinking, I'm thinking that I want to do like mini braids for the rest of the month of January. I need a style that's going to make me like not have to touch my hair. I don't know if y'all noticed, but I've been wearing like this little bun for the past couple of videos and my hair just needs something to, I need to be putting my hair away and focus more on length retention and not so much like pulling and tugging on my hair. I'm going to do some like mini braids and I have some stuff on my mind because I read my book. Well, I was reading a couple of pages of my book. I know you guys have seen me talk about this book at least once or twice before, but um, it's the Heal Yourself, Reclaim Your Voice, Stand in Your Power, F Like a Goddess by Alexandra Roxo. It's basically like your own personal God to remind us of our own like feminine power, you know, our divine energy and how to like embrace the journey that you're on to becoming the true divine feminine that we are. So I read a couple of pages out of this book today and then I got an idea. I need to share some of these things with my girls because who better to share it with than my community, right? We'll link this book. If you resonate with any of the visual diaries, visual vlogs that I've been posting and you are also on healing and raising your vibration in any kind of way, I recommend this book. It basically breaks down how to get where you're going and she puts it in a very realistic way. Like she doesn't sugarcoat it. She don't make it hard to digest. I like the way that she conveys the messages in this book. So I wanted to talk to you guys about some of the stuff that I've read and hope, you know, that will resonate with some of y'all. But I think I'm gonna just go ahead and start y'all. I'm a little bit nervous. I haven't done like mini braids or any style like this, maybe years. So the first thing that I really, really, really resonated with in this book by Alexandra is she talks about basically like getting to know yourself. And I know we all feel like we know ourselves and we know, you know, we know who we are. We know where we stand with ourselves. We know the power that we have and we know what our voice is and things like that. But to be honest with you, a lot of the times those voices or that whoever it is that you think you are, you those are learned Basically, you're learning who you are through other people. Like, we have relationships with people so that they can help us to see who we are. And then we learn ourselves through the experiences that we have with other people, right? Which, that made a lot of sense to me because you have these different friendships. We have siblings. We have our parents. We have, and then, you know, of course, society. Like, we're learning ourselves through learning other people or being around other people and experiencing other people. She She basically broke this concept down of allowing yourself to get to know you without feeling guilty or feeling like shameful about who you were and who you are becoming because I think a lot of the times sometimes we get caught up in trying to present ourselves in a way that is comfortable for other people or that makes other people feel like they recognize us that we kind of like push ourselves down or we're not really expressing our true selves so what she says is she's like you have to she put it in plain terms. She was like, you basically have to claim your divinity. And when she said that, it like, it hit my ears kind of hard because that makes perfect sense. Like, claim it. Don't say, I am a strong black woman. I am a strong woman. I am, you know, I'm fierce. I am a beautiful protector. I am, you know, a very spiritual being. You have to, you have to embody that. You can't just loosely say these things and then move around your world as if other people are always going to perceive you that way you got to be okay with people not really not really vibing with who you truly are because at the end of the day you're never going to get to experience the life that you truly want to have for yourself if you're always trying to minimize your magic by trying to make other people feel more validated by you know by being around you people are very intimidated by women in general but especially a woman who you know, not only knows her power, but she knows her work. She is accepted that she's a magical cosmic divine being. Um, you know, she's a direct reflection of source. And source can be, you know, God or whatever it is that you believe in religiously um, or spiritually. 
being a direct reflection of source means that you are connected. You know what I mean? Like you have you have an aura about you that is just unmistakably unmistakably beautiful. And unfortunately in the society that we live in, a lot of people are just kind of shook by seeing people be them their authentic selves. We live in a world where we just live in this time where people are constantly mimicking other people's lives or mimicking other people's personalities. No one's truly being themselves. So Alexandra was saying in this book, she was like, when you actually step into your divinity and don't feel any guilt or shame about the woman that you are becoming and you don't have any fear, that is when you will start to see changes around you, around your circle, around just around you in general. It's basically like feeling like you belong. You know what I mean? When you're walking down the street, you're walking with your girls and they start talking about some stuff that you you definitely don't like resonate with or it's not something of a topic that you would normally be discussing if you weren't around those girls. You know the girls chit-chatting, gossiping, and talking about, you know, shave room, ST, stuff like that. Like if you're around people like that constantly and you're trying to keep up with them, you're trying to fit in at that point. You're not really, you don't bring up the, the topics that you want to talk about. Like you don't talk about deeper surface, you know, deeper conversations or the mysteries of the world, or even if you have like conspiracy theories, just like other things that interest you. You don't talk about those things because you, you're trying to fit in. So part of this book um, has been like helping me. Well, I kind of already knew these things, but she's putting it into plain terms. Like, yes, you are divine being. Yes, you are magical. Yes, you have this power. And yes, people are afraid of it. But are you afraid of it? Okay, like, are you afraid of yourself? Are you afraid of who you are? So that's basically like what stemmed me wanting to do this video because I was going to do my hair off camera. But then I was thinking about it while I was washing my hair. I was like, wait a minute. There's so many people who I feel like feel the same way. It's just you don't know that there's so many other people that feel the same way as you because everyone's doing the same thing. Everyone's literally copying each other out here. Everyone's trying to have the same style, the same aesthetic, the same mindset, the same opinions. You know, no one's being original. So we're about to get into being a true goddess, being a true light being, and honestly just being... Just being yourself. So, yeah, I'm about to go ahead and uh, I need to go get like a towel or something because using this, um, the shine and jam, my finger's getting tacky. I just realized this is probably going to take me like some hours. So, I don't even know if you guys will see the finished result tonight. I'll probably end up having to finish this tomorrow because it's already, yeah, yeah, it's already 7.36. But uh, another part of the book that I really, really liked was... Um, or another topic that I kind of want to just like openly share without feeling like what she was saying. You got to release that fear and that shame of who you are. We are, when people talk about like doing shadow work, I know y'all see this loosely on, you know, social media and stuff now. But do we actually know what doing real shadow work is and doing real healing is and where you should begin? Especially as a woman, because I feel like as women, society does these things that we, we I feel like we experience way more traumatic experiences as a woman not only are we like this you know we are this being who creates life but so many times we are put in positions where we're either forced to not ex not display our femininity so much so that we're being safe you know not a, you know not really display how powerful we is because there's another person that's more intimidated by your power or not really you just we kind of get like put into these boxes these spaces that we don't fit into so Alexandra was saying, she said, you know, trying to find the, trying to find a balance between healing and acknowledging the trauma that you did go through or the painful experiences that brought you to your transformational journey. And I have been doing a couple of little videos about this, but I haven't really gotten too deep in it because I could sit here and talk about my pain and my trauma forever, but that's not what I'm here to do. What I'm here to do is share that Looking at that stuff can really be scary. Like going through the healing process is not supposed to be some, you know, oh, you know, it's very, very luxurious. I'm in this space where I'm, I'm healed and I'm so now I'm glowing all of a sudden. But people normally want to show the aftermath of them getting to that point. People don't really talk about how they got there or what led them to going through such healing. You know, I think that what I'm trying to learn is. I don't have to be ashamed of anything that I went through that has caused me to really like take myself seriously, take my health seriously, take my you know transformation more serious because 
without those things, I wouldn't really realize where I wanted to be. I wouldn't feel so comfortable expressing where I wanted to be because I felt like I was still stuck in that state of trying to fit in with such, you know, trying to put myself in a box, basically. I have been, over the past three or so years, shifting away from the societal standards of living as a woman like just living as a woman period but especially being a younger mom being an entrepreneur um you know being in the, i guess like being in the public eye all of those things like i'm shifting away from trying to put myself in these boxes that i feel like i'm, I'm supposed to be in because i don't belong <laughs> i always have this thought in my head where i feel like i don't belong in this space i don't belong here i don't even think i belong on this planet to be real with y'all but we'll save that for another day um I'm trying to shift away from the lives that have been constructed for me based on what other people are living in. The, there's a capitalist society that we live in, um, you know, the way that our parents raise us to be, uh, you know, who our partners want us to be, trying to fit into fr certain friend groups, anything that you're doing that you're trying to get other people to see you in a certain way, you really got to like start breaking that stuff down. And that's where the real shadow work, the real healing stems from. You can't just come out on the other side and say, oh, I'm healed or I'm in the process of healing. Like go back into those darker memories, go back into those almost, you know, sometimes traumatic experiences and really identify what, what do I, what was not serving me in this moment? What was not benefiting my highest good? Because a part of this journey is to realize why you are trying to make it out or what are you trying to make it out of who are you trying to become right and i think a lot of this spiritual this spiritual journey for me is just trying to be like a free being i have been conditioned to think that i had to have it all together all the time that i had to you know that i'm not allowed to have you know a bad day i'm not allowed to not look as put together as i am or just all these things where it's basically like do you ever get to honor the time where you don't really feel like your best self or if you're going through a time that's not as if you're going through a tough time are you going to acknowledge it or do you have to put on that fake smile and keep it pushing like so that other people aren't seeing you as a weaker individual or like as if you're struggling in some kind of way no i'm not doing that anymore part of this journey is to just straight up show me that i want to run free okay I want to be able to go through my highs and go through my lows and not have to worry about who or what is looking at me in a certain way because I truly feel confident in the person that I am, the person that I'm becoming, and I'm a true light. Like, I'm I'm one of one. You don't find people that are as honest and open, especially in this day and age. Like, everyone's trying to fake it to they make it. Everyone's showing their highlight reel. Everyone's showing their greatest moments no one's really breaking down the tough times that that shadow work that we're all talking about on social media no one's really no one's really getting to the nitty-gritty is what i'm trying to say working on finding safer spaces to be and like i was telling y'all before doing like the visual diary series that i'm doing i'm gonna call it a series i guess doing this like visual diary series is one of my safe spaces it's one of my containers to you know transform to continue to grow because all of this is to, to continue to grow i don't ever feel want to feel stagnant and something else i learned is if you ever are feeling stagnant or you're feeling like you're not seeing progress in any area of your life that means that you are out of alignment okay you are focused on something that is either a distraction it's not for you or it's a test you're going through a test to see whether or not you're faith is strong or whether or not your mentality is strong enough to make it through so like i said 2022 was one of those years for me that just kind of felt like i was in the same i was in the same loop i felt like my life was on like an infinite loop i was in like a labyrinth maze just going through the same things month after month day after day like that is what really got me to thinking i am holding myself back and i know if y'all saw my video where i was talking about like getting out of my own way that's what it is for me. It's really like step out your way. So it's step out the way. You're holding yourself back. You are putting yourself in spaces that are not meant for you. If it's not meant for you, it's not meant for you. And I honestly have learned like if it flow, it flow. If it don't, let it go. <laughs> okay, like as simple as that. Anything that goes for a business that you want to start. You know, if you're starting a business and you feel like you are... um you feel like you're facing the same challenges and you've done all that you can do. You've researched, you've 
try all the different methods, you've studied, you've taken courses, you've connected with your community, you've done every possible thing that there is to do, that means that whatever that business is or whatever that niche is, that's probably not for you because the things that are for you don't cause you stress. They don't, you don't have a hard time with the things that are for you, basically. So with that, I wanted to say that I am surrendering. I'm surrendering everything. I'm letting it all go. I'm really just going to start to let the universe work for me at this point. Like I have done my vision boards. I have written down my goals. I've even tried to connect with other people and not be so limited in the different types of rooms that I'm able to walk in. Like I'm not, I'm not holding myself back anymore. So I think that what this is going to show me is that what this is going to show me is that I can be just as powerful as I want to be and as soft as I want to be and still find a balance in, in being both. I don't have to be one or the other. I don't have to be super strong and keep it together all the time. I can be soft and I can have emotions and share them like normal people. I don't have to, you know, always have everything put together. I don't have to limit myself to expressing who or what I'm going through because of the conditioning that I have been that has been placed on me. We're always taught to be like strong women. We're always taught to, all right, well, you just got to make it through. Like, you got to do whatever you got to do. You just got to keep pushing. Okay, but what about when those wheels just stop moving for me? Like, what about when it's too hard to get up in the morning? What about those moments? Like, are you, are you going to just sit in them? Or are you going to acknowledge them, live with them, and then move on from them? You know what I mean? Um, and so, like I was saying, part of this, like, visual diary series is getting me to feel more comfortable expressing myself and talking about things that I write about in my journal all the time. But there are so many other people out there that I feel like go through the same type of things. And I'm missing I'm missing my community by not by not being open in that way. So before I even continue, y'all, I just want to go ahead and say thank you for thank you for being a part of this journey with me because it's not easy. This is not easy at all. But now that we've talked about all of that, I do also have something else that I want to share. It's basically like it's basically like an idea of how you can start to maneuver through your healing process. Like how can you actually heal? What is healing? How do you how do you make it through and get to the other side? So how do we heal? How do we change and how do we like transform into our highest self? How do we get to the woman that we want to be, you know, um, in order to change, to heal, to make magic, to, um, you know, transform all of those different things in order to do that, you need like a container, a safe space. And that's what I was just talking about. A container, you need a container or an intentional space to make that change or to hold those changes in somewhere that you can go, that you can like create, that you can, um, you can do your healing, you can do your creating, you can do your becoming, you can do your unbecoming. If you need to unravel or you need to let loose, you need a space. There needs to be like an intentional space to grow. Um, and like why? Why do we need a space? Why does it have to be a space? I really say space because that's just a word that makes sense, but it's really like a container. Think of it as like your own personal healing box or a box that you put away you're healing in or you step into when you're working on something, right? The reason why we need that is because in order for a change to happen, you need to, there needs to be an exchange. There needs to be somewhere for that energy to go, right? We're all about trying to grow and trying to evolve. But where does all of that evolve and go? You know, where's all that, all those energies that we are now releasing, those traumas that we're releasing, those people, those things, where where do those things go? Do we just like let them just fly free, you know, let them roam the earth or whatever the ethers? No, you need a space to put them in. And because energy, energy can, um, energy flows, right? We're all energetic beings. Energy just flows. But energy actually needs to be contained. Otherwise, it will like disperse. Think of it like um, when you're making a pot of tea. I like this one. When you're making a pot of tea, right? You need some. You need a container to transform that boiling water into tea, and that container is going to be your kettle or your pot or whatever it is that you're doing. You're boiling in. That is your container. That is what 
that's the the tool or the space that you're using to transform to become um it's 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 just this is where the magic will happen in this kettle this water will become tea so um you basically need like three different things to do our work or to begin our healing journey you're going to need like a little bit of space in your emotional state you're going to need a physical space like a physical safe space and then you're also going to need a little bit of space in your calendar to contain all of this energy that you're releasing um so when i was thinking about like some spaces that i could actually create one of them for my like emotional release or my emotional um container is my vlog <laughs> it's you guys it's this community that i'm trying to build because having community means that you're finding like minds and like souls and people that will be able to um reflect the energy or reflect the person that you're becoming any person that you meet or anybody that you are in contact with or you have a good relationship with that you trust they basically become like a mirror right these are people that you trust, so you're you're talking to them about things that are going on in your life. They're going to know your flaws, your perfections, um, you know, things that you want to become or like your, your passions. They're going to know all these things. So once you start to actually vent and open yourself up to that community, all of that, all of that energy and all of that expression that you're giving out, they're going to be able to reflect that right back onto you. And that's why I was saying like, if you surround yourself with people who you don't vibe with or you're not energetically connected with, it's really not going to work for you to be healing because you're constantly reflecting the vibration that they're putting off. And if they're always gossiping or they're chit-chatting or this is not talking down on nobody because do what you need to do. OK, do what you need to do. But if you yourself are not aligned with that energy, then that mirror is basically going to shatter. You're never going to truly have a safe space to contain the transformation that you're going to because you can't really you can't really be as vulnerable as you need to be right so my safe space at least the emotional safe space is becoming my visual diaries i have one in my physical book which is what i'm journaling at but i also wanted to be able to like go back and you know see the physical state that i was in see the way that i was able to articulate just see how i was able to open my throat chakra basically so um you need to have like families friends um a group chat like the group chat that i'm creating where we all just you know come in there and we start sharing ideas talking about how our days are going just just being open just talking to girls who have like minds like energy like souls that's a safe space and your um your physical container or physical um box needs to be taking care of yourself like you can't really heal you can't really grow if you're not physically you're not taking care of your physical body right because this is the body that we're using to get us from one place to another if we're going to transform obviously we need this body that we're in so if if that means that you need to start like eating better or you need to start working out drinking more water if you need to sing, you need to dance, you need to do some kundalini yoga, uh, do more stretching, meditation, like take care of your physical self, y'all. Because without this body, we can't make it to destination that we're trying to get to. We need this body to be in good shape. Um, and then like, and then as far as making time for your journey or your transformation, you need to actually like put some of these things into a daily practice. Whenever you're going through a real healing journey, it's it's very easy to get distracted or to get lost or to get even unmotivated, get knocked off course because the devil is always working, okay? There's always going to be some temptation out there for you. So what I mean by like daily practice is if you need to wake up and the first thing you do is stretch, for example, you're stretching first thing when you wake up, um, make that a part of your daily practice because the more routines that you have while you're on your healing journey, the more fixed you will feel, the more progress you're able, you're actually going to be able to see, right? I just think that having a daily practice is kind of essential to your personal growth. This is not even just about healing journal, just, you know, your healing journey. This is like personal growth. If you want to see some progress, try something for 30 days consistently and see how much progress you actually can make, right? Focus, very dedicated. But since we're talking about spiritual maintenance and growth, 
if you need to wake up and the first thing you do is sing a song or the first thing you do is meditate for the first 15 minutes of the day, try to do one of those things um, consistently because I think the... I think that consistency in a daily practice, actually implementing something into your routine that's going to aid you in your spiritual growth is going to, you're going to be able to see the change at the end of it, right? You can do, you can commit to something for at least 30 days. I'm going to try to commit to something for 30 days um, and see, I'll, you know, I'll let you guys know how it actually goes for me. But something that I do in the morning is I just like lay there. I'll, I'll wake up, I'll hear a sound like my daughter waking up or the cat moving or something and I'll try to just lay there for 15 minutes and like mentally try to reflect on the dream that I had the night before because my dreams are very vivid and I feel like my dreams always have like messages in them for me so I'll try to recall what my dream was but another thing that's very easy to do is meditation if you can wake up and meditate before you pick up your phone or like log online and start to get into that social media the the busyness of the online world commit 15 minutes in the morning to yourself before you you know give all your energy into you get sucked into that like negative void that is the internet <laughs> you're going to be able to calm your nervous system a little bit you probably will release some anxiety and as a woman i feel like skincare routines that's the easy daily practice that we can commit to right we all get up want to gaze at ourselves in the mirror, or at least I know I do. I always get up. First thing I'm doing is laying there for a few minutes, reflecting on my dreams, and then I'll get up and I'll go and do my skincare. And sometimes I literally like look in the mirror at myself. And part of that like practice for me is just whatever whatever I look like in the morning, I need to be okay with who I look like who I am. I need to be okay with not always Waking up fresh face, waking up as pretty as you can be. I mean, I, I'm beautiful regardless, but having that like one-on-one -on -one time with yourself in the mirror first thing in the morning is kind of like a self-love ritual. You know, tell yourself, today is going to be a good day. I'm grateful for waking up this morning. You know, the sun rose this morning. It was very beautiful. Listening to the sounds of the birds. I'm just grateful for another opportunity to be my best self. You know, you got to reflect and be comfortable reflecting with just you just as bad as we need community you also got to be able to like fold you got to be able to hold it down with yourself and rely on yourself for that reassurance because seeking outside reassurance sometimes just not it people will lie through their teeth <laughs> um but anyway the other safe space that i was talking about where i said like community and how important that is i just feel like as humans if you have your tribe, your soul tribe, uh, the growth that we can make by working together and working in in groups or in numbers, just like how we used to, um, there's just so much growth that can happen when you're working in a little group of a couple of people that share the same interests or at least share energy with you. There's a lot of room for opportunity and I feel like in today's society, we have lost touch with actually communicating with people and like connecting with people just because everything is everything is texting and FaceTiming. And, but where's the real community? Where's the time to sit down with your girls and not just be gossiping, you know, actually like doing some yoga or, you know, doing um, a group meditation. Oh, my gosh, I would love to do a group meditation with a couple girls, um, group meditation, even doing like dancing and singing journaling together those type of things the um these people become your mirrors so for example i'll explain how this community has helped me in a couple of ways every time that i have felt like i couldn't i couldn't go on i couldn't pick up the camera again i couldn't you know resume my business i couldn't um anytime that i was having that self-doubt once i did get back into the community and start connecting with you guys again it seems like you guys just like y'all are so y'all like really resonate with me on a different level i feel like people have been watching me grow in such a way that they're able to like they're basically like let me know like girl we saw you do this before we can see you do it again like we've seen how you we see how you do what you do and we're rooting for you that type of energy those type of people that are like willing to push you and not like wait on your downfall 
I needed that. I needed those reminders and I needed this community because who who else is, you know, people in your personal life will just be sitting there waiting for you to fall so they can say, ah, I knew she wasn't going to make it. I knew she was going to end up fumbling the bag at some point. Like, these are people that actually know you. So to have this community on YouTube and, you know, even in my business is, I don't take it lightly at all. So I'm very grateful that I have found my safe space and that you guys are actually like vibing with me on this so uh, i'm gonna finish this braid and then i need to go and grab my water i ended up taking like just a little bit of a break i had to get something to eat and um put the baby in the bed but now that she's asleep i'm gonna have to like talk a little bit lower so i don't wake her up or disturb her sleeping she's trying to get in the bed but um Something else, you guys, is really, really, really important. Something else that I found is really important when you're beginning your journey to like self, more self-love and like self-healing, like overall transformation, is having a sacred space, having a dedicated space to be in when you are, um, you know, a space that you need to go to when you need to like retreat or you feel like you need to like unwind or meditate or. Whatever the space is going to be used for, you you need a space, y'all. Like You need your own space. It can be as simple as having like a corner in your bedroom that you can clear out and set up like a little... Bless you. <laughs> it can be as simple as having like a corner in your bedroom. A corner in your bedroom, having a garden, or if you have a closet space that you can like shut the door in. But whatever it is, y'all, put make it fill like comforting to you make it feel like your space your sacred space so for me i remember when i was setting up like my um my very first sacred space it consisted of something very simple i had this elaborate plan at one point to like transform my attic into my sacred space but um i had to put a pause on that plan so anyway i ended up just like setting up a couple of different crates and making like this tiny corner in my office that has like my healing books, my self-help books, my crystals, my um, my little oracle and tarot decks, you know, my journals that I like to write in, anything that I'm using that's helping me feel like I'm elevating in my life, like I'm actually stepping into my power, right? But it can be, you can put like framed pictures of people that inspire you. This will also be a really good place to put like your vision board, if you've done a vision board, or to put... Um, you know, to have like your candles, your incense, your sage right there, like anything that you feel that's going to help you to create that creative flow or like to just get connected to yourself. It's, it's your space, so it can be whatever you want it to be. I know when I actually do get the time and money, I'm going to make a whole room my sacred space because I feel like I need a room. I want to have like meditation cushions and crystals and like pretty art on the wall. Um, nice rugs on the floor. I like those like those rum dividers or like crystals. I like those sun catchers, dreamers, like everything. I want to have it feel like my space. But it's basically just a physical space to anchor your work in reality. So whatever you're doing internally, like that work that we talked about where you're journaling, meditating, um, those things, you need like a physical space to reflect, you know, or to go to when you feel like you need to get away. It's like your little escape. But another like container or sick or space that you can use for your growth is nature, y'all. We cannot we cannot like we have to utilize what God has provided for us. Nature, being outside. Um something that I like to do or like that I like to use as my container is at night. If it's a clear night in the sky, I like to take my telescope and like go do moon gazing. I'll show y'all me doing that one night. My telescope is actually right here in this corner. I'll, I'll show y'all a whole process on that. When I go moon gazing and just like admire the constellations, I also have like this app that I use that shows me exactly where the constellations are in the sky. Sometimes when, in, when it's warm outside, I used to... Um, I used to just like go sit out on my deck to get some vitamin D to do some solar rising because I realized that working in the house I spend a lot of time just inhaling the same air not really getting that fresh 
connection to nature, you know, walking barefoot in my grass, actually like um, laying down on my deck to do meditations and yoga, stuff like that. It's just like one of those things that you see in movies where people are like, you know, tree huggers or like they're walking outside and they're like admiring. Oh, that's a beautiful bird. Oh, look at that tree. Look at the leaves on this tree. Look at that flower. I'm that type of girl. Like nature, I love, love, love plants. I love being outdoors. And I feel like the natural world, the world that, you know, the outdoors is like a natural reflection of us because when you're outside there when you just sit outside and you're still for a second you take a second you start to notice the sounds that you hear right you hear the birds you probably hear if you live in a busy neighborhood you probably will hear the cars going by but like try to tune all that out and focus on the sounds that you hear that are just nature you hear animals interacting you'll hear you know bees and butterflies and all types of things just you know doing their thing it's a flow nature has its own flow Yes, it's chaos out there. There's a lot of stuff that's, you know, either too noisy. Um, sometimes things can be very chaotic in nature, but everything seems to flow. There's a natural flow to the way that the animals interact with each other, the way that the sun rises and the moon sets, the way that um, the way that the trees, you know, greet the wind and the wind blows through the trees. Like I feel like observing those type of things and getting connected with physical things, looking up at the sky. Do something corny, like look up at the sky and notice what type of shapes you see in the clouds, y'all. Like, be a part of nature. Try to connect with things, especially things that you grow on your own. So if you do have a garden or you like planting, I do, I do really, really, really love planting. But I have had a couple of trial and errors with plants and some things. I'm gonna try to get back into it this spring, but anyway. Being outside is another way that you can like find yourself feeling more whole or feeling connected to to you. It's, it's going to be nine times out of ten. It's less distractions out there because if you find a space where it's just, just trees and just grass, like a park or like a trail or something, um, I like to go out there and just take my journal and take my little cards and just lay in the grass, reflect on whatever it is that's going on in my life at the time. and really like touch like get connected like I don't mean just be connected I mean like really let your feet touch the grass really um, pick up a plant um, you know if a butterfly flies past like let that butterfly float onto your hand stuff like that you gotta really become more in tune with the outside world so that's something else that I really have found is helping me I don't know I'm an earth goddess earth, earth angel earth sign Virgo energy so Nature, if that's not your thing, that's not your thing, but I'm telling you right now, have a, even if you can put some plants in your house, taking care of something that's a plant. Also, I find that's, you know, that's helpful too. A little bit off topic, but recently I saw something on, um, I saw this woman online. She was doing like, she was like offering like a divine femininity life it was like a course like to step into your divine feminine right and she's like this life coach and she's showing you how to become more in tune with your divine feminine and to embrace the goddess that's within you and she was like teaching women how to do this and the course was expensive because i clicked on the link just to see it was it was very very pricey right after i clicked off of that link i kind of just shook my head a little bit because and i wasn't like this is not me like judging or anything or like talking down on her or her business her hustle whatever do what you gotta do baby but some of the services that she was offering like she was saying um you know welcome into you into your healing getting in touch with your femininity um embodying the goddess that you are connecting to your spirituality and stuff like that i was wondering how can how can somebody help you to become the woman that you are meant to be. How can another person who's already done their healing, who's already been in their lowest of lows, who's already gone through whatever it is they have to go through to become this feminine life coach, how can they actually like tell you for yourself how to become who it is that you need to be? And I know I'm on here like giving y'all everything that I'm learning with this book, but I'm not telling you what to do. I'm giving you advice and things and resources that you can use to help you or aid you in the journey that you're already on okay I didn't say that any of this was going to be something that is it's going to work for you exactly how it worked for me because everyone's different we all go through our own experiences right
but I feel like I'm get, anyway I'm gonna get to the point I was noticing that there's just like a lot of pretenders online there's a lot of people pretending as if they you know they got it all figured out as if they're manifesting this and that as if they're always in perfect communion and alignment with the universe and I feel like that is like it's almost like fraudulent and it's giving this false sense of everyone can just glow up or everyone can be in their prime at all times like like I was saying before no one's really showing no one's really showing what they were doing to get to this point in life they're always talking about how they're I manifested this and I um how I um I got into my dream life I'm living my dream life but like girl where were you a couple years ago like what what, what shook your foundation enough that you had to stop asking you had to stop you know playing around and really get serious about growing and elevating so I feel like I'm saying all that to say you'll be able to pick up on energy you'll be able to pick up when you know that there's a woman who's truly in her authentic purpose she is truly you know she there's realness to her she has death it's not surface level and it's not mimicking anything for a quick rich scheme or for you know for a show like just to Spirituality is not an aesthetic. That's basically what it was that I was trying to say. I was trying to dance around it and make it like so I can make it make sense to y'all, but spirituality is not an aesthetic. And I feel like those people who live those super aesthetic lives and are trying to um you know, trying to fit into the aesthetic realm which is portrayed by social media, you're almost like dimming down your authenticity because some of that stuff is not really you. Like, have y'all ever seen those moms that uh they make like their children's nursery into like the super modern, like very monotone colors, the grays, the whites, the nudes, and there's like no color in the room. I'd be looking at them nurseries like, what is wrong with you? That child needs some color. How are you going to teach your child to really get, to have a childlike experience or to learn by there being in this like dull, dull nursery, this dull playroom? That's, you can't put people, you can't fit people or beings into the box that matches your aesthetic. Aesthetic is really what's out here killing these people and really hurting people's mentality because I'm gonna fit into a cultural box that doesn't even resonate with you at all. And that's the whole thing. Like regardless of what social media got you out here thinking, find the box that suits you and live in that box, okay? Make your own box. How about that? How about we all start making our own cultural you know aesthetics? Like what's your aesthetic? <laughs> Why does everyone have to have the same aesthetic? Feel like that's very very weird and I feel like that's why it's, it's it's very important to break that paradigm to get out of that um you know unlearn get out of that programming remind yourself how wild and how free you could be if you were truly just being who you are you know uh, yeah I feel like it's power in individuality and we're losing a lot of that but anyway I got a little bit off topic it doesn't matter your shape, your ethnicity, your size, your sexual preference, your, you know, your taste in music, your taste in um, decor, any of that. None of that stuff matters. When you feel confident in yourself and who you are as an individual, you don't want to fit into these boxes because you're limiting your power. You're actually not. Because then you kind of like dull your aura. Everyone has a natural aura to them. And we all radiate different colors. Everyone has their own color that they're radiating. If we're all walking around trying to mimic each other's auras, I feel like we honestly will just lose our identities. We'll lose our creative expression. And this is, we're leading ourselves into a world where individuality is just not, it's not, um, it's not welcomed. And like when people share their opinions on stuff and everyone's all, how could you say that? Like, why would you feel that way? Because it's my opinion. How harsh you think it is or how much you disagree with it isn't that not what an opinion is it's because it's my unique opinion it's my own idea it's the way that I feel about something and that whole cancel culture thing is another thing that's stripping away people's freedom of expression freedom of being freedom of just you know being an actual human y'all I think we're turning into robots real like we really are we pushing this whole robot dynamic way too far all right, I know they're working on some robots and stuff, but that don't mean we got to become the robots. Why can't we just all live our unique, wild, free, different lives? It is now 9 o'clock, 9 4. I'm um, going to finish doing like at least like the back section of my head and get up to the middle of my head and then I'll come back. Because I'm trying to zoom through this, but 
I'm moving really slow, I feel like. And I feel like it's obviously my press lens. Not helping me braid as quickly, but I'm gonna try to finish this and then I'll come back if I if I finish this. I'll come back and give y'all a little update. It's the following morning, you guys, and um I know I look tired because I actually am tired. But I I pretty much stopped here. And I got a little bit sleepy, so I was like, you know what, I'm gonna just finish this in the morning. And it's now 10 30. I want to be done this by at least like 12 30 so I got about two more hours mini braids are one of those styles that you either love it or you hate it because it takes the install process takes too long and then the takedown also takes too long but we are here for protective styling I'm a lazy natural as I already know so I want my hair to be like put away once I get to like the crown of my head, like the very last row or something, I'll come back. Okay, I'm back with a little bit of an update. I finished the right side of my head. And now I have this small little section right here that I'm about to work through. This is probably going to end up being two rows. Two rows of about 15, maybe like 15 braids. So I'm going to say I got about 15 or so braids left in this section. Since I am on the last section of my hair, I did say that I was going to come back. You know, check in with y'all because I have still been reading my book. And I know I left y'all on like a little cliffhanger last night with the conversation we was having about our feminine energy and our journey to our higher self. That I feel like we live in a very like male dominated world. I feel like we've been just, you know, we, we, the, the, world that we live in is very like masculine energy it's very masculine dominated it's all the god consciousness the you know males rule basically like the men are in charge but i feel like if you haven't noticed already there's a lot of women right now that are trying to like heal and tap more into their soft girl era or their feminine girl and their divine femininity and i was thinking about this um like why are we so there's a collective shift that i feel like is happening where women are realizing that yes there needs to be we do need the masculines and obviously we need the masculine because they are the protectors, they're the providers, they're who, you know, take care of all the things that are too, too forceful or too, um, I guess like too hard of a task for a woman to have to do because women, you know, the, the woman, we are the creators, we are connected most to the mother earth, we are most connected to our intuition and our emotions and stuff like that. So like we're more soft, we're more nurturing, we take care of the house, we take care of the kids. You know we do all those things but I realized that like this is a collective shift that's happening these are women in the masses that are coming together and kind of realizing like wait a minute just because we're in a masculine dominated world doesn't mean that I have to be always in my masculine energy and like what is masculine energy you know like what is the difference between masculine and feminine energy and I was thinking about this in a way that kind of shifts from like the patriarchal mindset you know like well men go out and do you know men are in charge women stay home with the kids like not necessarily like gender roles type of thing but like the energy that masculines provide the energy that the women in you know that the women provide what is the difference um like i said naturally women attract we nurture we take care of we support we we are more in touch with our intuition which is connected to mother earth the cosmic the moon you know things like that whereas the men they are in charge of things that are like root, that are embedded in the earth. They come on the earth and they can have a tool. They have the tools to use what we've told them and what we've taught them to make something out of it. We're not really like the makers. We're more of the feelers and the men are the doers in that way. So masculine energy and the feminine energy, I've just noticed that a lot of girls are realizing like I've been, I'm too hard. Like I'm, I want to be soft now. I don't want to have to, you know work so hard for things that just should come to me naturally or easily because I am a woman and you know there's men in this world that should be providing um but I see like all these different topics online while people are going through their separate healing journeys which like I said is more the women doing their healing journey I don't really see a lot of men that are you know actually like trying to heal they're kind of just in their wounded masculine like you ever see those comments and stuff where men basically be you know, bashing women that feel like they should be paying for their first date and taking them out and, you know, like the men should be doing everything as far as like dating goes. And I feel like some men today, I feel like they're the prize. I feel like men are shifting from feeling like they are the providers and the protectors 
to I'm also the prize and I want to be protected and I want to be taken out and I want to be courted and I want to be okay not saying there's nothing wrong with that because men also deserve some of the same things that we do but there's a balance that needs to be had and I feel like we are we off balance we are so off balance the women are in their masculine energy and the men are too tapped into their feminine so naturally we like marry each other the women are behaving more masculine and the men are behaving more feminine but anyway what what I wanted to say was I feel like I have learned through my own experiences that I'm just I have so much feminine energy like this past year I have been pretty much operating in a state where I'm feeling like I am do, I'm, I'm doing too much I'm doing too much and that's why I'm so tapped out and that's why I feel like I'm um exerting so much energy and you know just was in that negative like this this negative state of thinking because now I'm not I'm not thinking in a natural way that comes to me I'm thinking in a way that how would a man do this how would a man provide how would a man protect you know those type of things and there's nothing wrong with that we need balance like women should know how to take care of themselves obviously but I'm just so proud of all of the girls out there all my girlies all the ladies that's taking their power back and focusing more on like healing themselves so that they can truly live the soft girl life that we deserve like we should be able to not only um you know take care of but be taken care of I mean not, yes it comes naturally to us to you know cook clean take care of the kids and you know present ourselves in a way that's nice for a man and things like that but how can we truly have all of that energy if we're not if we're too tapped into the masculine and with the world already being in the masculine dominated world, it's kind of hard for us. So I just be seeing a lot of people saying that whole thing like, OK, let's let's get into it. Yeah, let's get into it. If you have a man who's rich, obviously, and you feel like he should be taking care of 100 percent of the bills, then that's what works for you, because that's what makes sense to you. It's nothing wrong with your opinion. It's just I feel like we're we're missing the whole topic. Like we're missing the real issue here. We're talking about 50 50. But let's talk about who's the masculine and who's the feminine in the relationship, because that is where you're. Able, it's going to flow easier if you're able to distinguish like who's, you know, who's who. Because if I'm a man, but I feel like I'm the prize, and I feel like I should come home and I should have my bath towel, my socks, my shoes, my underwear, and everything laid out. I should get my back rubbed as soon as I walk through the door. I should be getting kissed all over. But I'm a woman. And I also got to leave out the house and go to work every day and do the same type of things that you're doing and then come home and do that as well. No, baby, it's no balance. So um, I think that that conversation just kind of gets on my nerves a little bit because I just feel like, for one, social media is so sensitive. People be so sensitive just because that's somebody else's situation don't mean you got to take it personal or don't mean their opinion has to like get you all worked up because that's their opinion. That's their life. Why are you taking things and harnessing them internally like scroll through it notice their opinion okay i agree okay i disagree and move on like i think we're getting too wrapped up in wanting everybody to share the same mentality and that's why this 50 50 conversation is like it's toxic it's very very toxic because y'all have people who are at home comfortable living with their situation with their 50 50 but then they get online and they see oh wait a minute the girls is in their soft girl era hold on I shouldn't even be paying these bills. Now I'm about to quit my job and make you do everything. And now I'm putting us in a place of struggle because the internet said that we're not supposed to be going 50-50. Like, have your own experience, okay? Have your own experience. And as a true divine feminine, as a true goddess, um, naturally we want the men to take care of us. And that's what they were here for, you know? That's why we need the men. But as a true divine feminine, you know everything needs balance, you know? You know that once you find your divine masculine, your counterpart, your person who matches your energy, you're going to naturally want to provide for them. And sure, you might take over a little bit of responsibility at some point because um, you care about your man's feelings and you care about taking care of just how we're naturally, you know, wired to do. So it's nothing wrong with that. And I just was like thinking about that and I was like, wait a minute. The conversation needs to be had. Like, why are we fighting so hard? Why are we fighting? period like why are we fighting a true goddess is not going to be operating in um a, a state of competition like you're not competing with the man the man is here to do what the man does you shouldn't be well he make this money girl relax tap in okay tap in for real do your work and if that man ain't doing what it is that you need him to be doing for you for your personal 
you know, mindset on the things that you personally believe in, then baby, just you got to go ahead and just leave the relationship. Don't we as women are going through our collective shift and energy. But what about the man, y'all? I'm seeing that there's a lot of men that are struggling. And if men don't feel like they can provide for you, if they don't feel like they can take care of you, they are naturally going to go into a depressive state and um, feel like they're not worthy. You know, we have this thing where when you're not living up to what it is, you feel like your roles are. Either whether it's, whether it's based on what society says or just what you feel for yourself. If you don't feel like you're living up to that, you're going to feel not worthy. And that leads to depression. And then you, you know, you're pushing yourself back further as opposed to um, your partner or your counterpart, like, explaining to you what it is that they're, where is the place that they're coming from. You also got to consider how people were taught to grow up. You know, if you lived in a household where your parents took care of you and they were able to, um, you know, you stayed at home until you were 21 and they made sure that when you got to college, you paid your rent, they made sure you had money on your car. Like, if you come from a household like that, it's easy for you to say that it's easier for you to think that when you get out here, you're, you're naturally supposed to have whoever you're dealing with should automatically know that they're supposed to be taking care of you as well because you've been taken care of up until 23, 24, whatever. Um, but for me personally, I did not come from a household where things were just like taken care of for me. I always felt like I had to like take care of myself and I did from a very young age. Like um, 15, 16, I was pretty much living on my own, you know, um, doing things that I needed to do for myself. I didn't really have the parental support to make sure that whatever it is that I needed in life was going to be taken care of. I had to shift my thinking from expecting to going and getting it. And that's where that hustler mentality comes from. That's why I feel like um, part of my you know, drive to want to make my own money is because I literally only have ever had my own money. I haven't been handed no inheritance. No, oh, here you're going off to college. Here's your little lump sum, your change. Nothing. Any money that I've had, I made it myself. Um, and I'm getting a little bit off topic, but what all I'm saying is that you, we, we got to get to know people and really have like open dialect about this whole like masculine and feminine energy and goddess and God consciousness and um, the soft girl era and stuff. Don't don't force your beliefs onto a person who just doesn't energetically align with you because now you're you're you don't know how far you could be pushing somebody back on their journey to healing because of the way that you think and if they don't think that way or if you guys are not agreeing in your mentality then it's probably just not a good fit like don't force people to change that's a whole nother topic if there are other things that y'all want to like talk about or you wanted to like you want some conversational pieces on this channel just like drop your your ideas please feel free to share how you feel about some of the things that i'm you know talking about i do like having conversations that's one thing about me i am open to having a conversation. I, I think that we're all, we should all value our unique opinions and the way that we express our opinions because that is how we grow as a collective, you guys. We all are here with different brains, different ways of thinking, different, um, you know, strains of consciousness, just, just different auras in general. So I feel like we learn from each other and the way that we learn from each other is remaining unique to who we are. So if y'all feel like y'all don't agree with some of the stuff that I'm saying or you do agree like don't be afraid to say whichever that is because I obviously I'm just not one of the people to be like oh well your opinion like it triggered me and I can't believe that you would say that because like girl I, please speak your piece is all I'm saying please speak your piece but on that topic um, of not forcing people to change I think I have learned a ton of lessons this year this year particularly I've just learned that as much as I'm willing to grow and evolve and change the way that I am, transform, like that's just part of who I am. I am, I learned that my middle name actually means rebirth. Renee, it's like Renee Way, Renee, Renatra, is to be reborn, like the rebirth. So the way that I'm feeling like I'm going through all these changes throughout my life all the time is because that's just who I am. It's in my nature. I don't really like staying in the same state of mind for too long or being so stagnant and my life if something is not right I try to remove it fix it address it and get on with it I want things to change I'm always shaking some stuff up right but if there's people around you that notice you changing and they start to either like you know they they feeling some type of way about it 
and they don't like the way that you're expressing yourself now because you've learned how to voice your opinions better and you've learned how to express the things that you feel better or just in a different way that they're not used to. If it makes other people uncomfortable how you're changing um, and they won't change with you and on top of not changing with you they'll try to like I guess hinder you from your transformation for your life for your personal well-being or for your personal growth you have to just either like leave those people behind or um, not leave them behind but just detach yourself a little bit like that attachment you have to release the attachments to things that don't serve you in the new life that you're in because every day you wake up is a chance to begin anew if you decide that you're going to change the way that you see things every single day that's up to you like that is your birthright and nobody can take that away from you you know so this year specifically I learned that you can always see the good in people you can always see you know you you will naturally want to see the good in people that you love obviously you're not going to go and look for them to be a bad person or you know to not be who you thought they were but um when people just don't want to change and you're noticing a pattern of stagnation and repeating the same cycles and like the same behaviors that you don't feel like align with you, you have to be comfortable with getting uncomfortable without having those people around. Like like I said in a couple of videos, I have learned that the people that I'm either removing myself from or have been removed from me was for my highest good. And though it felt scary and it was like, dang, I can't believe it was for my highest good because I would have never, I would have never gotten myself out of certain situations because of comfortability. You know, it doesn't matter how, it doesn't matter if you know it's wrong or if you know that these people shouldn't be, you know, that the way that people are living their lives doesn't line up with who you are. You won't really do anything about it because it's uncomfortable and fear. Like I said, we, we hold ourselves back just based off fear. So, um, if you notice that people around you aren't, really vibing with the new you let them go and keep doing you that's that's God telling you you know they're not here they're not here for the long run they had a time in your life and that time that they served in your life was for whichever purpose that they fulfill it could be friendship it could be you know showing me new experiences it could be um you know you taught me a different way to love and you showed me or they you know whatever the purposes that these people had in your life they fulfilled it at that time when they show you that they don't like where it is that you're going or who it is that you're becoming um especially when you're evolving for the good like especially when you're not like resulting to like doing drugs and you're not like changing for a negative reason you're changing for a good um when they start to show you that stuff y'all you really just gotta like release them and feel okay with letting these things go because i'll tell you i've realized that um i'm such a such a mom like i'm so caring about people and i want to see people doing their best and living their best and having everything that they truly wish to have in their life but when people start to see me obtain those things and they see me having everything that it is that I desire some people naturally just don't feel happy for you the way that you do them and I don't know it's it's kind of effed up but that's just how some people are and the longer you basically what I'm saying is the longer you keep these energies around you the longer it's going to take you to fully reach where it is that you're supposed to go and Oh, here's my testimony. When you do cling on to things that do not align with you, the universe, God, whatever you want to say, will start to literally remove things from you to show you like, hey, I'm telling you that don't align with you. Hello? Hello? What are you not seeing? I'm telling you that this doesn't align with you. That's got to go. That's got to go. And things will just literally start to like remove themselves in the ways that you don't want them to. So what I'm telling you is check in with yourself. Is this person best for me? Or is this person, can this person come with me where I think that I'm going? If they can't, go ahead and release the attachment as soon as you can. Because the longer you hold on to it, the louder and the more, um, I guess, the stronger the stronger the removal will affect you. Or the, the deeper the removals will affect you. Because if you're not going to do it, God is definitely not just going to sit here and watch you continue to repeat these same cycles. He will get loud with it and be like, I told you. This wasn't for you, so now I had to take this away from you so that you can learn. And these are lessons that I've been going through this year. So bad, y'all. So freaking bad. It's almost sad to the point where it's like, I wish I'm not so hard-headed. Because I give, 
you know, I give, I like to give the benefit of the doubt. And I, like I said, I see the good in everybody. It don't matter what you've done to me, how wrong you've done me, or none of that. I naturally will just be like, well, they're not a bad person. Um, I, my camera just died, y'all. That was really rude. I was saying that, you know, I be giving people so, so many chances until those things start catching up with me. And now I'm in a state of lack or I'm getting things taken away from me or I'm having to face the consequences of just being stubborn and not really following what it is that my gut is. That's part of your divine feminine energy. That's part of feminine energy. Trusting your intuition. You know, when you feel that feeling with whatever it is and you get that gut feeling, you have to develop a relationship with your instincts because that's how we survive. As a woman, that's how we thrive. We, um, we, we, things come to us when they're meant to come to us. And I think part of, you know, this healing journey for me is to be like, I don't care what it is. My, my intuition may not be 100% accurate all the time, but I know what it is that I feel. And I feel very deeply. And so when I do feel deeply about things, I got to honor that. I got to check in and be like, all right, you know, thank you for, thank you for giving me a nudge because that's a nudge. That's, that's like a, a um. That's like your angels tapping you on your shoulder, like, hey, hey, you good? Like, are you okay? You know, here's something to help you along, because I see you getting a little bit stuck, and I see you second-guessing yourself, but you know what you know. I want us to all be thriving, and I think part of that is to build your confidence back up with trust in what it is that you know is right for you. Like, you have to feel comfortable with your femininity. It's easy for women to put on their makeup. Not shading nobody that's wearing makeup, but it's easy for women to throw on some makeup, throw on a nice outfit, get their hair done, and put on a facade as to being super healed or to being super, um, you know, I, I guess like being, I don't know, trying to portray a more radiant personality than they actually do have, you know. But if you're not magnetic and if the things that you want are not attracting to you effortlessly, um, you can already check in and be like, this is not my authentic self. I'm putting on a persona because this is what feels good on the outside, but on the inside, I know that I'm not, I'm not fulfilled. So I just been noticed a lot of, um, you know, trends where girls are doing certain things that I can tell is, it's because it's a trend. It's because it's a, a quick, it's a quick fix, especially when everybody's on social media trying to display their most, you know, their most proud moments or their most successful moments on social media. You're losing the touch with your real feelings. You're losing touch with your real, with your reality. We're losing touch with reality just based on scrolling for hours and trying to give in to other people's um, perceptions of us. I'm in a state of constant elevation. I can't be fooling around with y'all, you know. That's, um, that's just basically it, y'all. I feel like I have talked to y'all for over an hour, probably. I don't know y'all probably like this girl just be chatting, but if anything that I'm saying makes any sense to you, <laughs> just go ahead and let me know in the comments because I do like sitting down and like doing these type of videos and talking to y'all and sharing ideas, expressing how we feel about stuff. And part of the stuff that I'm sharing with you, you're going to see reflecting in the things that I have going on outside of YouTube. I have a lot of stuff that I'm working on behind the scenes that... I just want people to feel, um, I know what I'm connected to and where I'm going, but I wanted to kind of like give y'all a little bit of insight and we don't never really have these type of open dialogues on this channel. So like I said, these visual diaries is my safe space, my container to connect with like minds and like souls. And hopefully you guys have found something in this video, <laughs> something, um, either it was interesting or you felt like you related to it in some kind of way. Let me know below. Let me know down below in the comments. Um, I got about. I'm on my last row now, so I'm gonna finish this row and I'll come back when my hair is done. And I'll see y'all. Uh, yeah, I'll see you guys when it's done. Whew, I'm finally done. That took a lot longer than I was expecting. It is now 1:47. I wanted to be done by 12:30. Clearly that didn't happen, but it's okay. Cause I still got about three hours that I can dedicate to getting some work done. I wish I would have finished my hair last night, but I was so tired. Um, but yeah, I'll show you guys like a close up what it's looking like. 
I really like this a lot. I feel like, um, like if you can tell my ends, I kind of like curled them loosely with some curl cream, a little bit of water and some mousse. And I put a little bit of some gel. So like the ends are curled a little bit and it's very flat. I think the amount of braids that I actually did, I feel like the amount of braids that I did was a good amount because it's a good amount because it's not too many, but also I don't feel like I got these big humongous parts. Like I wanted it to be, um, I wanted to have very, very mini braids. It's my first time doing like the mini braid look like this. So I'm excited. I did my edges a little bit. Um, this braid you want to keep on flopping up too so I'm probably have to like clip this one like put a clip to like weigh it down or like actually I haven't even tied my hair down yet so I probably need to like tie it down a little bit but I think overall I'm gonna give this hairstyle a 10 out of 10 because though it took me probably like six maybe like six hours this took me like six hours to actually get the finished product I do feel like this is a good protective style. I'm going to keep this in for the whole month of January. Then I might take them out, you know, and then refresh them. I'm going to try to keep my hair in some sort of protective style for, you know, the start of the new year. Because I don't want to be fiddling with my hair too much. And like I was saying in my other video, yeah, I'm a lazy natural. I don't want... I just have a hard time, like, feeling like doing my hair most days. So... I'm about to see some other ways that I can style this look. Like I know it would look cute if I did. So yeah, I'm going to do a little turn around so you guys can see what the back looks like. Because I haven't even seen. I haven't even fully looked at like the back to know what it looks like. I know my part's not even, y'all. I couldn't see really what I was doing. But here is like the back of it. Um... Yeah, I'm about to like play around with this and see what it would look like if I pulled it up. Because that's probably how I'm going to wear it most time. I die, I wear my hair down. All these little braids. I'll probably end up wearing it like half up, half down. Something like this. But yeah, this is, this is, mama, this is mama style right here. Let me see. If I tie my hair tie. do a little half up half down type of vibe and um i have a couple of i got another pack of those little like gold you know the little gold hair accessories i don't know if i want to throw some of those on but to give it a little bit of a you know so it's not so boring but yeah this is cute um so that's the half up half down i could even do it flipped over like this you know like a little bit like flipped over so it's kind of like a side part I guess that one don't want to be up there um but what I will say about this style y'all really quick before I end this video is the thickness of your hair is going to matter a lot when you're doing this like everyone's hair is going to look different when they do a style like this because the density of your hair will determine whether or not it, you get a super full look or you get Kind of like my hair where it's not, I don't really have very thick hair. My hair is very, very fine. Um, I have a really, I don't want to say it's thin. I have a lot of hair on my head, but it's not thick. It's not super, super thick like my daughter's hair. So I feel like that plays a part in the way that the ending look, you know, comes out. So I don't know. I'm I'm happy with it. I do want to do one more thing though because I want to know how this bun is going to look. Even a little ponytail. Ponytail is cute. Like if I do a pony. So y'all about to see me with these braids in my hair for a minute. If y'all see me with the same hairstyle for a long time, you know why. <laughs> because I'm on a length retention journey. And being a lazy natural, not really wanting to, you know, mess with your hair too much. I used to do my hair all the time. But motherhood caught up to me. Life caught up to me. And I just gave up a little bit. And I did clip my ends a little bit because I was noticing I really care about like the overall health of my hair whether I'm styling it often or not I just want my hair to be really really healthy um, and my hair grows very fast but retaining the length you know like actually like seeing that length 
because the more you mess with your hair, the more you manipulate your hair, the less TLC you're giving your hair, the less you'll actually see your growth. So that's the purpose of me having these little mini braids. And let me know if y'all like this, like me doing my hair content and you know me doing my hair and like chit chatting with y'all. Let me know if that's something y'all into. I need to flip my hair over. And look, it's probably gonna be my fave though. As y'all can tell, I'm a big fan of ponytails and buns. Like a messy bun. Um this is not you know something like this where it's just up and then I could even get fancy on them, leave a couple down, you know. This is just me playing around with it, trying to see how I'm feeling, but overall, I really will rate this hairstyle 10 out of 10. I like how um, my hair feels very moisturized, and I can already tell that I'm going to be able to, like, go on about my day without worrying about managing my hair too much. As, mo as long as I, like, tie it down at night, keep, my keep it mousse and oil my scalp, which I can do, and I can still wash my hair very easily with this style because of how many braids I did. And this is my first time doing mini braids. This is my very first time doing like these very mini braids like this. So comment down below if you guys like this hairstyle. Or if you guys want to see me do more content like this. Where I'm kind of just doing, you know, different things with my hair. And, um, you know, talking to you guys. But I think I'm going to go ahead and um, get started with my work day. And I think I'm going to end this video and start another video. So yeah. Um, I love you guys so much. And I will see you guys in my next visual diary vlog. Alright y'all, so before I end this uh, this vlog, because this was like a visual diary kind of vlog, so I didn't want to just leave you guys after I kind of just like was venting to you guys and like talking to y'all about some feminine healing and stuff like that. I kind of want to leave y'all with a, a positive message. Let's just see what the energy is for anybody who's watching this video, no matter what time it is or when you catch this video. Um, I'm going to kind of give y'all an earth alchemy message. Um take with you what resonates with you um let's just see what is a message that i can give to all of the beautiful feminines the boss babes my girls anybody who's watching this video this is a message that i can give to my girls who are watching this video please show me clearly if there's any messages that you have for me to share with the divine feminine the feminine energy any feminists who are watching this video at this time. Just gonna get one message. Please show me clearly if there's any messages that you have. For the divine feminine. Okay. Ooh. That one jumped out, y'all. Hold on. That really jumped out. <laughs> Okay, so we have, so the card that jumped out was the the Amethyst and Passion Flower card. I'll let y'all look at it. See how pretty this is? It says, Violet Flame, Transmuting and Breaking Additions, Breaking Addictions Nervous System. So I'm going to go ahead and see what that message means for y'all. Amethyst and Passion Flower. This is a beautiful card though. Let's see, Amethyst and Passion Flower. Okay. Y'all yeah, know I love my Amethyst. I always have my Amethyst crystals with me. And you guys have seen me use that crystal in several of these videos. So I feel like this is very on time. Let's see. Amethyst Medicine wants to dig deep through all parts of you to help you transmute any blockages due to negativity and lower densities in your light body. It burns it up with this violet ray, turning them into something positive. It is a calming energy that moves in waves to wrap you in its violet glow. 
Amethyst of the Stone that wants to help you break unhealthy attachments, thoughts, and addiction. Did I not did I not say this in this video? Come on, I can't make this up. It helps the emotional body access the core pain of anger, grief, or fear held around this. I saw you about this and simultaneously connects with and soothes the nervous system so you can release it in a calm, safe, and held way. It holds the frequency of the violet flame and intense fire that wishes to burn through your systems, through all layers, cells, atoms, and space between the cells to cleanse. It is needed now more than ever to help us move forward through this ascension and to raise a higher vibration. It doesn't just cleanse you or your space. It helps accelerate and enhance your spiritual development. The root of many diseases lie deeper in our emotional and mental layers. The core of the violet's fire medicine and transmutation and transformation provides you access to heal these issues, deeply cleansing and purifying, working to shift energies within and around you fast, okay? It is with you today to bring balance. I was talking about this, to bring balance. Focus on opening and aligning your energy through your third eye and your heart. It offers protection, expansion of ideas, and decision making, helping you move forward in life and opens gifts of intuition. Have I not been saying trust your intuition? I mean, I... Look, this is why I pull cards, okay? Because the messages and the downloads that I be getting and the stuff that I feel that's on my heart, I feel it coming through. Like, I feel that there's a message that I have to convey to the people who are, you know, watching my videos, anybody who I'm, like, vibing with or connecting with. So, this Violet Flame and Passion Flower Amethyst card was exactly, it came right on time because every single thing that I'm reading was a message that I was saying earlier in this video. So, let's get on to Passion Flower. When working with amethyst energy for this card, it gives you a crown of passion flowers, asking to be repaired with this energy to complement the healing. It's used by herbalists for its ability to soothe the nerves, ease stress and anxiety, calm the mind, much like amethyst medicine. When a passion flower comes to you, you are called into your inner sanctuary slash heart to resurrect divine love and compassion for yourself. Hmm. <sighs> It has a deep connection to Christ consciousness with this folklore being pinned in the 15th century by a Spanish missionary in Peru who saw this flower as a symbol of the crucifixion. Each part of the flower holds symbolism of the crucifixion story from the five sepals and petals representing the ten faith apostles, three stigma representing the three nails on the cross, and the five anthers representing his five sacred wounds. So basically what I'm getting is everything that I was saying about the God consciousness and the goddess consciousness and connecting yourself to a higher being. This amethyst and passion flower combination is helping you. It's a card that was pulled because I feel like somebody in this video right now needed to be guided there or needed to hear that message. This is a somewhat intense part of folklore, but nonetheless important. It wants us to dig deep, as amethyst so lovingly puts it, to resurrect parts of ourselves and to understand the deepest meaning of our personal suffering. I was also saying that we have to go back to get like unblocked from the negativity or the traumas that we have gone through. Because part of your transformation is you're trying to heal from something. Like you've been through something that has hurt you in a way that you feel like you got to change your whole life around. So Amethyst will help you with that. And um, like in the vine of the passion flower that reaches upwards toward the light, it shows us growth is possible. Helping us connect with the full force of forgiveness. Y'all listen. If that wasn't a message for anybody, I mean, just go ahead and skip this part of this video. But if you did resonate with this card and you felt like you enjoyed me, you know, shuffling my cards and pulling a message for y'all. Because this is for me as well. Like, I feel like this card is speaking to me, but I know that there's somebody watching this that also is, you know, has the same type of energy as me and needed to hear that. So, I just felt compelled to do that. And I think, I don't know, it was random. I cut the camera off. I said, thank y'all. We'll see y'all in the next video. And then... All of a sudden, I was like, wait a minute, a message. There's something, like, I need to tell. I have to share with y'all. So, thank you guys again so much for watching this very, very lengthy video. If you found anything helpful, useful, or you just, like, enjoy vibing with me in this type of video, please leave me a comment, subscribe, like the video. Let me know so I can know that this is the type of, you know, y'all vibing with me, basically. So, now I'm going to go ahead and finish starting my work for the day, and I will see y'all in the next video. Love y'all. Peace.